Bay Area. Virginia? No, oh, Bay Area. Okay. Bay Area. I'm a Bay Area person. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm from Morocco originally. Uh, Napa. Okay, oh, that's before. Yeah. I will meet you right at the top of the first flight of stairs. Thank you. So the tour I'm going to give you guys is both uh, history and a little bit of the paranormal. Uh, I try to keep everybody informed, you know, with, with what happens here, what goes on here. I don't go into all my personal experiences. You know, I've been doing these tours here now for eight years. Right. And I've got some, I've had some pretty amazing things happen to me here. Uh, you, and during the tour or just at night? Uh, I, during the tour you can and being up here doing want. investigations. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. What are you, you, can, you can stay in here, or do you have like? I'm going to tell you everything. Okay. By the time we're done with this tour, okay. hopefully all your questions will be answered. Cool. So first off, uh, welcome to the Washoe Club. My name's Richard. I'm going to be your tour guide for the tour. Uh, first thing, we do encourage you to take pictures, take video, uh, keep an eye on your devices while we're walking through the building on the tour. If at any time throughout the tour you see that you may be having a very significant battery drain. With your cell phones or your cameras, chances are your devices are being tapped for their energy. That's a good indication to me that we could have some activity on the tour. Correct. That's also a good time to really start taking those pictures. A little bit about the history. 1860, they started the construction of the building. It was completed in 1862. President Lincoln was in office at the time and Nevada was not Nevada. It was Utah Territory. Now, the period between 1862 and 1875, this building was being operated as an office building. But during that period of time, it never did do very well as an office building. So in 1875, a group of men came to the building. They took it over, and that's when they created and started the Millionaire's Club. Now, the Millionaire's Club, located here on the second floor to your left and through the hallway there, this section of the building on the second floor is known as the Millionaire's Club. The third floor, they converted that into living quarters. And it was mainly the miners of the time occupying the rooms here at the building. Now these miners that were here at the building, they were some of the best paid miners in the country. They were being paid $4 a day. Compared to the rest of the miners in Virginia City, they were being paid 53 cents a day. Wow. Now, the reason these men were being paid so well here, they were brought here from Europe, from Cornwall. They had an expertise in the mining industry that they did not have in Virginia City at the time. And all that was, was to go down into the mines, shore up the tunnels to keep them from collapsing while the men were down there working. Uh, here on the second floor, some of these rooms did remain offices. Some of them were converted into living quarters. This room right here with the gold wallpaper, that was used as a reception room by the millionaires. But what I'd like you to do right now, just walk down the walkway here, go right around the corner to your left, and I'll meet you in that room right over there. There's a lot of, like, a lot of static in here. You can already feel it on the lot. Now what I'd like to point out to you when we get into this room here is the large window up there. That is called a transom window. Now back in the 1800s, this, was your air conditioning, and it also made for good ventilation. Every single room that we go into on the tour, you will see this type of window in the room. Now, I did make mention that miners were living in these rooms. Now, these guys, they're smoking cigars, they're smoking pipes, they're smoking opium, they're chewing tobacco, their hygiene, probably not very good. There was no indoor plumbing back in the 1800s, mm -hmm. so at times these rooms probably reeked. And on top of that, the only source of heating that were in these rooms during the winter months for pot belly stoves. So you've got that carbon monoxide dumping into that mix as well. So like I said, this did make for good ventilation. How they got the ventilation system to work was very easy. They just opened up the windows in the front of the building, opened up the windows in the back of the building to create a cross right. flow of air going through these rooms continuously to keep that poisonous air flushed out of here. This was going every single day of the year, including the winter months, just on like days like today. Let's go to the reception room here. 
Everything in this building is original. So they like they put all this molding in when they built this building. Yes, so they did. It was pretty expensive. Right? Oh, wait, but this was this was the cream of the crop, as far as Virginia City goes at that time. The only other place that was as beautiful as this place was the International Hotel. And they had an elevator. But the there, end, right? it, yes. And then that was the only elevator west of Mississippi. Right? Yes, it was. Yeah. And that hotel burnt in the Great Fire of 1879. Okay. This building did not burn in that fire. They got the fire. Um, uh, put out before it ever got to this section of town. How did the tire start? It started up on uh, A Street. Uh, somebody was working with a, uh, a kettle uh, that with a fire underneath it, and it just happened to be a very windy day. The wind knocked over the kettle, it caught the ground on fire, and with that wind, it just took off and it took out everything that was on the north end of town. Uh, they get that afternoon wind here, you know. Yes, they do. Same with that yes. person. Uh -huh. the Zephyr. Well, I live in Mount House, and yeah. so I know what the wind is. Like. Yeah, I used to work at Capital City Lounge for seven mm -hmm. years. I know what the wind's like. You know, it's like right there. Now, this room here, this was a um, uh, a reception room that was used by the millionaires. If they were going to have company that would visit them here, or if they were going to conduct any kind of business with somebody, they would use this room like a meet and greet room. They would get to know their business partners. They would have their whiskey. They take them across the hallway here and on into the Millionaire's Club. They would go and go about their business throughout the evening. The wallpaper that you see on the walls here is dated in the 1930s. Are you familiar with the TV show called Ghost Adventures? Yes. Okay. Then, if you've been watching the show from the very beginning, you probably know by now that the Wall Show Club has been one of their favorite places to come to to do investigations. Yes. They have done three televised investigations here at the Wall Show Club. If you'd like to see these episodes, they are on the Travel Channel on Friday nights in the rerun cycle. But if you'd like to see these episodes all at once without having to wait, just go to YouTube. Yeah. Type in Ghost Adventures. Oh, okay, <laughs> then you know. Yeah. You know by now. Yeah. Now, I also want to tell you, uh, just week before last, the Ghost Adventures crew was here in Virginia City. They were just down the street at the Union Brewery doing their investigation at the Union Brewery. And the guys were all over town, so everybody got to meet them. And and uh, there's the Opera House, is that it, or the... The Opera House, house up here on the street. That's once they've had actually the entities show up during performances, I've heard. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. And yeah, pretty yeah. amazing stuff there. There's some pretty amazing pictures yeah. taken from the Opera yeah. House. Yeah. All right, I'm going to take you down the hallway here. We're going to go through right around 30 rooms, 9,000 square feet, and two floors. Some of the rooms you're going to go, you're going to be going into are going to be dark, but they're perfectly safe to go into, and we do have some mannequins scattered around the building. So let's go down the hall. Mm -hmm. This first room you're going into is a little bit dark, but it is perfectly safe to go into. There is a mannequin sitting to your left. The only, I've gotten into the, uh, the routine of letting people know about these mannequins because we do have little kids that come on the tour and they do get scared. <laughs> so it's just it just comes out. Hey, there's a mannequin. And, then this is a, the and you'll see that's Willie Nelson sitting there. <laughs> as far as I know, he's still on the why, why don't they, yeah. they keep building onto this? this I'm right? going to explain everything okay. to you. This seems uh, awful weird. I will explain everything to you. Just give it a little bit of time. I'm sure all your questions will be answered by the time we're done with the tour. Now, we do have five spirits, ghosts, whatever you'd like to call them, that pretty much make the Washoe Club their permanent home. But as a paranormal investigator, I do know the spirits around town, they do travel. They go from place to place, from building to building. Investigators are picking them up as well as our five resident spirits here. Now, the first spirit that we have here is the old prospector, the old miner. We never know where or when he will make his presence known. It could be at any time, at any place throughout the building. But most recently, he's been making his presence known in the big ballroom that we're going to be seeing in just a few minutes. The other spirit that we have here is Lena, and she is probably our most famous one. Now, Lena, she is usually found or seen on the spiral staircase or somewhere nearby. She never seems to venture very far from the spiral staircase. Now, we're really not quite sure about the history on her. We think that maybe she was one of the ladies of the night that used to come to the Millionaire's Club. She may have fell down the spiral staircase, or maybe she was even 
pushed down as far as to a case we don't know. Hmm. The other spirit that we have here is our cowboy, and we call him the Shadow Man. Now, if you are lucky enough to have him manifest, which it has happened before, or if you do capture him uh, in a picture with your cell phone or your camera, he does show up in a dark, shadowy form, and you'll see his cowboy hat very distinctly. And he is usually picked up right here in this area where we're at now. The other spirit that we have here is a little girl by the name of Ella, and I'm going to go into her story when we get upstairs to the third floor. The other spirit that we have here, his name is Scotty, and I'm going to go into his story when we get upstairs to the third floor as well. This big box that you see out here, this is the cap that is on top of the spiral staircase. Now the spiral staircase is very old, it's not very stable, it's not safe to be on. So the cap was put on there for people's safety and to help with the longevity of the spiral staircase. The spiral staircase it never did go to the third floor, only to the second floor. This was one of the routes the millionaires were taking when they were coming up into the millionaire's club. Let's go to the room next door where it's nice and bright. And when you uh, say millionaires, uh, uh, they were all Comstock millionaires, or yes, they, they were. were investors. They invested in the mine. And, yeah. And, okay. I'm going to go into all that before the tour is over. And, and there was like 100,000 people in here or something like that? No, there were, there were right around uh, 33,000 people oh. at the time. How many live there now? Uh, right around uh, 900. Wow. Big difference, huh? Yeah. Imagine the traffic. <laughs> <laughs> Little New York City, huh? Now, back in the 1800s, Virginia City did not have a morgue. The morgue didn't come to Virginia City until right around the year 1900. Now, during the winter time here in Virginia City, the graveyard, the ground is frozen and it's usually under snow. There were no backhoes in the 1800s to dig these graves. All graves were dug by hand. Well, in the 1800s, when someone passed away, when somebody died, they had to find places around town where they could store bodies, some place that was going to be cold. Now, one of the coldest places in town they could find is right here at the Washoe Club, the liquor store, Jerry. So during the winter months, the liquor came out and the bodies went in. Oh, wow. Mm. Now, there was an outbreak of smallpox in the 1800s, and quite a few people did pass away. One time only, there were 70 bodies stacked back there waiting to be put into the ground. Wow. But any normal year, if you call this normal, there would be maybe seven, maybe even up to a dozen bodies that would ever be stored back there at one time. Now, the bodies just weren't tossed back there. They were wrapped nice and tight in burlap bags to help with decomposition and help keep the smell down. And then they were stacked nice and neat. So just follow me right back there. Pretty interesting. Come over it? here to the second or third step. Look over to your left. You'll look right down into the area we call the crypt. This is where they would stack the bodies. And at the end of the tour, you guys can go back there and check that out for yourselves. Here, let me move out of the way so everyone can see. Now, if any of you happen to have recording devices with you, or if you have recording devices on your cell phones, the crypt is a very good place to do EVP work. If you're familiar with that yes, process. Yes. Yeah. This is a very fascinating place, I tell you that. Oh, it is just, it's bizarre how, that, how it's put together. I mean, it really is odd. Well, considering this place was put up in two years, that's amazing. Right. And this building is still standing, and it's still a fortress. Yeah. Yeah. If you guys are ready, let's go over to the Millionaire's Club. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty thick plaster walls, too, huh? Well, uh, there's a rise on the floor right here, so please be careful there. Okay. Uh, this is the cap that is on top of the spiral staircase, which you will be seeing at the end of the tour when we go to the museum. And you said they put that cap in for safety purposes? Yes. Uh, for the, like, when did they put that in? Uh, it was put in uh, probably in the uh, the very late 90s, the early uh, 2000s. Right down the hallway here, go to the room on the right, and then circle around into this room right here. See, the only stuff they put in here was fire suppression. There's no uh, power, right? This no power up here, no, except for the exit signs. Now, I just want to point out to you, the furniture, 
that you're seeing scattered throughout the building. This furniture really has nothing to do with the Washoe Club or the Millionaires Club. These are just period pieces that have been brought up here, put on display, so people can get an idea what the furniture looked like back in the day and maybe give you an idea of what the room could have been used for in later times. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much the same story with all the pictures and the paintings that you're seeing scattered around the building. Now, some of these pictures and paintings, they are actually from the 1800s. But some of these pictures and paintings are as new as the 1970s, 1980s. You'll notice this picture right here. I happen to know that this picture is from the early 80s. And you can see where the Ross price tag did not get completely taken up. So we know this is no antique here. Let's go to the big ballroom right next door. All right, one question. Uh, yeah. this, it, this was put in here just for environmental. Is that yeah. the steam uh, heater, right? It's the radiator, yes it is. The radiator, yeah. Why uh, they don't they didn't have radiated in here, right? Back in those days. Uh, but like in this building they didn't work because it would still be fresh, or whatever. Yeah. That's so, just a piece that's been bought up. That's what I'm been saying. So they, somebody was using this for antique storage or something, or well, what it is now. <laughs> <laughs> it is now. Well, it, it, I obviously would. This room right here, this is the ballroom. This is the ballroom that was never used as a ballroom. You had a building full of men inhabiting the building. They didn't see the reason to have a ballroom. So what these guys did, they put a